Okay, today is Halloween 2020, and in this video I'm going to cover the work I've been doing over the last few evenings on the RV-10, uh, specifically Section 6, Page 3, Steps 1 through 4. So in these steps I'll be taking these parts and building this, and then adding the skin to get this. So let's start the time lapse. Yeah, so uh, this is still section six, still working on the vertical stabilizer. Uh, the parts I'm working on today are going to be the, um, the front spar, the two in spar ribs, the two uh, nose ribs, and the top rib. And uh, basically, I'm peeling the blue protective plastic off of it, and then I spend essentially uh, the entire day deburring and shaping and cleaning up these parts. Uh, to be able to clico them all together and form the basic skeleton of the vertical stabilizer. So I did this work on the uh, October 25th, and uh, this video is going to encompass work that I did the 25th, 26th, 27th, and 28th. Uh, this is by far the most time-consuming part, this deburring. I'm trying out a few different, you know, a few different tools. Uh, I can use the magnifier that I'm wearing there uh, to really see, you know, just how thorough I can be. Uh, so I use files. I try out. I have a couple of different blades that, uh, if you want to call them blades, uh, that fit in the little deburring tool that's uh, on the table there. I'll, I'll pick that up and use it in a minute. And then, of course, I'm using the different, uh, the different uh, 3M wheels. Uh, over there on the grinder, and also I've got a smaller wheel chucked in the drill press from before uh, that I end up using. Uh, so there I think I'm using the little edge deburring tool. I think I was actually just holding it in my fingers uh, to try the, to try that out. And, uh, you know, like I, said, I keep going back to the file. Uh, there's the tool again. And yeah, you know, this, this takes a while, uh, a long while. By the end of the day, uh, I've gotten a lot more uh, efficient with it. I sort of know what order to go in. There's a couple of other you know, things I do that help speed things up uh, in a little bit, I'll mention. Uh, this, I use the, uh, it's a two inch, uh, two inch wheel, one inch wheel. It's a one inch wheel uh, in a mandrel, uh, 3M wheel in my drill press that I can you know, put inside those lightning holes and, and just sort of spin it around and, you know, that, that makes real quick work of those. Uh, does a real nice job. So that's what I'm doing when I go back over there. And now here I am hitting it on the, you know, the 3M wheel on the grinder again. So what I'm doing here is I'm cutting up a, a 3M, a 2-inch 3M cut and polish wheel into little pie pieces that I then uh, shape with a, a utility knife and holding it in some sandpaper and spinning it around, uh, it basically, and then I put it on the end of a Dremel bit and then chuck that in my drill. And uh, rather than try and show you how I make it, I'll just link to, uh, I'll give credit where I got the idea, which was from uh, Plain Lady's video, and I'll link to it in the description. But it's a, it's a really helpful thing. Uh, it takes some getting, it takes some practice to get good at uh, using it, but you can use it to, uh, you know, smooth out the areas in between the rib flanges and in some of those little notches that are really hard to get at. Now here you can see I'm back at it with a, a file. What I'm actually doing there is I've got a little, uh, well, a couple of different files I'm trying, uh, curved files and uh, the drill again. And I'm, what I'm trying to do is smooth um, in the in the plans in section five, they mention that uh, when the rib flanges are formed over the forming block, uh, they don't they don't follow uh, the edges of the flanges don't necessarily follow the curve of the forming block perfectly, and that can lead to faceting of the skin if you don't uh, you know round those areas where the where the flanges are you know broken into sections. And so I'm trying different ways to do that, uh, you know, using the file. And um, what I finally 
what I ended up doing with most of the ribs that, and that I found that worked the best was actually to just use the uh, the 3M wheel on the grinder, but surprisingly not the cut and polish wheel because you really don't want to take away that much metal, um, but just the uh, the finer, softer, uh, I think it's a, a two density uh, wheel instead of the seven density wheel. And, you know, that is more of a polish wheel. It doesn't really, it's not really supposed to take away metal, but, you know, it, it'll, it'll take away some metal and you don't want to take away a lot of metal. So I, I used that and I think that worked really well, at least on these pieces. So what I'm doing here is I take a uh, flange tool and I'm straightening, uh, straightening the rib flanges. Now, for the vertical stabilizer, they don't mention doing this in the plans, uh, at least not specifically. Again, this is one of those Section 5 general sorts of things. Um, and I don't know, uh, well, for one thing, the vertical stabilizer is tapered. So getting the flanges perfectly 90 degrees isn't really exactly what you, what you want or need to do. Uh, by the same token, it still seemed like they were a little bent a little bit more than they needed to be or less than they needed to be. Uh, and so that's what I'm doing here is taking them closer to 90. And then uh, right there, I, I lost some video there, but right there at the end, you can see me uh, fluting uh, the rib flanges to take the curve out of the rib. Uh, again, a section, they mention that in section five, uh, you do that to a lot of ribs. They don't necessarily tell you to do it right there in the plans, whether it's really, really necessary on the vertical stabilizer. Uh, you know, I don't know why they don't mention it, but, uh, you know, again, they, they assume you've read section five and that you know that you need to do some of these things when you're preparing the parts. So, uh, that's what I was doing. I, I did go through and flute the flanges to take the curve. Uh, out of all the ribs and you know just get them to where they laid flat on the table. So here I'm finishing up the the top rib. Uh, I, I I've you know I showed the first uh, the 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 bottom uh, big inspar rib that was the first one I did and uh, you know not on camera here I've done all the others and now I'm. Uh, doing the top rib, and, and that'll be it. That's the last one. And uh, there again with the fluting pliers, just getting that thing nice and flat. So that's pretty much it for the uh, the deburring and the shaping and everything. Uh, I think I cleaned up a little bit and then uh, went ahead and clecoed the skeleton together. And that was pretty much it uh, for what was a long day of deburring and shaping. Uh, but the end result it was nice to step back and look at that. Uh, starting to look like an airplane part. So uh, this is the following evening, and uh, I guess the evening of the 26th, and really, uh, the only thing I did here was step two, which is uh, click all the parts together. I had done that already. And then uh, final drill all the skeleton parts. So uh, basically all I'm doing is, you know, remove a Clico, drill the hole, put the Clico back, 
to the next one, drill a hole, click go back. Uh, everything uh, number 30 drill and that's it uh, you know really just took a few minutes uh, to do this so yeah could, uh, come down and do this real quick in an evening and you know feel like I'd made some progress and get everything back together so uh, this is step three of uh, section 6-3 and it's a short step but it's a difficult one uh, basically clecoing the skin to the skeleton of the vertical stabilizer and it doesn't seem like it should be difficult but what seems to make it difficult is that it is just so tight trying to get that skin on there and I've watched other people's videos no one seems to offer a trick everyone seems to say it's just very very tight and they finally got it uh, and that was pretty much my experience as well. This was actually the second attempt. Uh, we tried to do it the same night that I clicked the skeleton together uh, and match drilled, but uh, I just I didn't want to force it, and you know it, it just turned into a wrestling match. So we did get it, you know, this this night, and uh, you know I think what what's really going on is section six does not mention or give any guidance on how much to grind down the tips of the flanges right at the leading edge, the, the tips of the nose ribs. Um, it's talked about in a general way in section five of the manual, but you know there's a picture, but again it's sort of hard to tell how much material to remove and you know they say shape it or radius it, but uh, you know, it's it's your first part of the plane, and you don't want to just be grinding away metal uh, like crazy because you can't put it back. So uh, it turns out in section eight, I believe, uh, which is the horizontal stabilizer, they do mention uh, they, there's actually a drawing with a shaded area, and they kind of you know go into a little more detail and actually mention you know removing material from the the tips of the flanges at the very tips of the nose ribs and I subsequent to when when we did this step in the you know in the video I've actually after I match drilled the skin and took the skin back off which is step four uh, or final drilling rather after that I actually uh, ground the nose ribs down just a little more because when we did this step here I did end up getting just some very minor cosmetic little, you know, dents, outward dents, uh, like pimples even, right where the nose ribs are, you know, just right behind the skin, the leading edge. And so, you know, once I had the skin back off, I, uh, you know, after drilling, I, I took and I, you know, very carefully worked the, you know, pushed on it and, and worked those uh, dents back out. And, uh, you know, I've now ground the nose ribs down just a little more and I, I think that should make it um, you know should keep that from happening when I actually rivet the skin to the skeleton but uh, this felt good this you know this really did uh, was really starting to look like an airplane part you know once I had this uh, this this was cool So here I am uh, back at it the next night. This is the night of the 28th. This is 6-3, uh, step 4. Uh, final drilling the uh, skin to the skeleton with a number 40 drill. And uh, there's really nothing to it. You, uh, you know, you, you drill every other hole, move the clecos, and then drill the ones in between. I did use a uh, straight fluted reamer instead of a conventional drill bit. It makes a nicer hole, and uh, just going through thin skin and rib, uh, it works fine. So one thing I notice, uh, you know, at this camera angle, and I've noticed this in some of the others before, the reflection of the fluorescent lights in the skin make it look like there's a, a dent or kind of a bend, and there's not. Uh, it's actually perfectly smooth. It looks real nice. Uh, that's just it, it just from this angle at catching those two fluorescent lights and the, the way it looks um, just something about the reflection
So yeah, that's it. All the holes are drilled. Now I'm taking all the Clecos back out, taking the skin off of the skeleton. Uh, next step will be to deburr all those holes I just drilled and uh, get ready to dimple all the holes and uh, dimple the holes in the skeleton. There will also be some holes that I'll countersink and uh, basically clean everything up, prime it. I'll uh, probably have a video uh, talking about what I've decided to do, at least for now, for priming. And uh, then it'll be time to rivet the thing together. So, uh, yep, skin's off. I've actually got it sitting on the table on a piece of carpet here, so I don't uh, scratch it up, because there are still some... Uh, you know, shavings and debris from all the drilling and, and whatnot that I've done up to this point on the table. I chose to do the soldering iron and straight edge trick uh, to remove the vinyl only from around the areas of the screw holes for now. Uh, you know, whether this is really necessary, it's not in the plans. Uh, they don't, you know, they basically just tell you to peel all that stuff off. But a lot of people seem to do this. It is tedious because, well, my soldering iron is old and, and uh, it just takes, you got to go a lot slower than the video really makes it seem uh, to be able to get a good, you know, melt a good score line in the vinyl and be able to peel it off. And so now I'm deburring. Um, basically on the, uh, the holes in the skin, I'm using the little hex bit uh, single cutting edge deburring tool that I got from Cleveland Aircraft Tool. I've got it in a little uh, cheapy cordless screwdriver that I've mentioned before. I'm just cruising along, just a tiny little little bit in each hole. Uh, and I mean a tiny bit. Uh, you know, don't let the don't let the fact that I'm using a quote power tool make you think I'm you know really taking a lot out of those holes because I'm definitely not. And in fact, uh, you know, in some of the holes where you, I was kind of tight up under there. Uh, you know, I'm just twisting the thing around in my fingers, and uh, you know that works fine as well. I'm not really uh, doing any more uh, with the power tool than I am, you know, with my fingers uh, when I'm just holding the bit. It's just, you know, eventually your fingers get worn out from doing that. So yeah, that's it for this one. Uh, that's six three steps one through four. I'll. Uh, Show a few pictures of it in a more assembled state here, even though uh, after this point, everything's pretty much been taken back apart.